Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Our Lady of Peace. As always, our music and our responses may be found in the worship aid. Please stand for the entrance procession. Come, ye thankful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in, ere the winter storms begin. God, our maker, doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. All the world is God's own field, fruit unto God's praise to yield. Wheat and tares together sown, unto joy our sorrows grown. First the blade and then the ear, then the falcon shall appear. Lord of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. For our Lord our God shall come and shall take the harvest home. For the field shall in that day all offenses purge away, giving angels charge at last in the fire the tares to cast. But the fruitful is to store in God's garner evermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, on this wet day, uh, we come before the Lord and listen to the words of the readings, the scriptures, uh, speak about the kingdom of God and Christ himself in images of growth of plants uh, that uh, do spring up through the rain uh, and the fruit of the soil. We know also that the Lord Jesus sends his mercy down, us like a gent down upon us like a gentle rain. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, 
Amen, amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Lord, it is good to It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to The just one shall flourish like a palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and it would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields a sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when sown on the ground, it is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. pretty common as students move on to high school and college and then uh, either after that or at some point in that process into the workforce to give them little bits of advice. And I'm pretty sure that during uh, the course of those transitions in my own life, uh, I received lots of advice. I know that for a fact. I think even one of them may have specifically been, don't do anything that you wouldn't be comfortable doing in front of your grandma. Um, and I get what that piece of advice is coming from. Often uh, our grandparents, of course, have much more life experience, have a lot more wisdom, uh, come from a time perhaps in an upbringing where uh, integrity and virtue and honesty and all of those sorts of things were maybe more highly valued than they are now. Uh, but at the same time, we also got away with a lot at our grandparents' house. So. I don't know how well that uh, analogy works for uh, our best behavior. Nevertheless, I think it's uh, a similar reminder 
that St. Paul is giving today, perhaps a better reminder as well, that we will all uh, stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And so what we do, are we comfortable doing it, knowing that we are doing it in front of the Lord Jesus and that one day we will have to give an account of it to him when we stand before him. Our faith teaches us that we will indeed stand before him at the end of our life to give an account of what we have done in the flesh, whether for good or for evil, as St. Paul says. This uh, second reading is actually one of the options that can be chosen for a funeral mass uh, for that reason. But a lot of times I think people uh, shy away from it. It's not a common selection uh, because we tend to get a little fidgety and uncomfortable around the reality that the Lord Jesus is indeed a just judge that we will encounter at the end of our lives. We'd rather not think about that often in that time when we are remembering a loved one who has passed. But it's important to recall that he is not only a just judge, but a merciful judge. And we don't need to, to fear him if we are turning to him for his mercy and for his forgiveness. But at the same time, again, we will be required to make an account of what we have done. Uh, one thinks, for instance, of Matthew 25, when the, the king uh, calls together his subjects and sh separates them as one separates the sheep from the goats. And based on whether or not uh, what they had done for the least of their brothers and sisters, if they had fed the hungry and given drink to the thirsty, because if they had done those things, they had done them for him. And so we will have to give an account of whether we have acted in charity towards those around us, as well as whether we have observed what he has told us and taught us in the Sermon on the Mount, and when he spoke to the scribes and Pharisees, uh, and whether or not we've kept the law of God, which he came not to abolish, but to fulfill, as he himself reminds us in his words in the Gospel. And so it's a worthwhile question to ponder every once in a while and to ask ourselves, are there things that I am doing? Are there things that I am choosing that I can uh, stand before the Lord and, and own with confidence? Or are there things that I would not be able to do that for uh, in my life? Uh, you know, again, it's not perhaps the most comfortable reflection, but it is something, and we would rather, of course, do things out of love for God rather than uh, fear, and the point is not to, again, be afraid of the Lord God, but it is a good motivation. It's why St. Paul is talking about it in the reading today. It's a good, it's a good reality check. And I think it's also good to, um, as we do this, to speak to the Lord about it as well. Ask him, what are the things that as I am doing and going about my day-to-day -day life uh, that I can stand with confidence before you, and what are the ones that maybe I need to think twice about uh, in my life. And then also to realize that as we do this, uh, to again, uh, look forward more than uh, into the past. All of us have things that we need to repent of in the past. Uh, all of us have choices that we made in the past that we wish we had done something different. Uh, but uh, the past is something we entrust to God's mercy. And this exercise is really more about looking towards the future. What choices can I make in the future and right now uh, that I uh, can then either stand with confidence or not before the Lord on that day when it is time to do so. Uh, so that all is focused on uh, making sure we're avoiding those things uh, that, as St. Paul says, we would have to give account for that are not good. But he also says, as he mentions it in that reading, that we will give, have to give an account of the good as well. Uh, and why is that? Why would we have to stand before the Lord and receive recompense, as he says, for the good? And the reality here is that we often don't see the effect of the good that we do. The virtuous things that we choose, the things that we can stand before the Lord with confidence uh, and say, Lord, I did this for you, uh, often we don't see the effect of that. Often, when we are faithful to the Lord, it seems like there's no, no payout for that. There's nothing that it gets us, at least in this life. Uh, and so the Lord wants to show us the effect that that has. 
I think this is partly why St. Paul talks about how we walk by faith and not just by sight. A lot of times we apply that to the mysteries of our faith and the truths of our faith, that we don't see the Lord and walk with him as the apostles did, and so we have to walk by faith. Or we don't necessarily see how the Trinity works or see the Lord standing here even though we know he is present in the Eucharist, so we walk by faith and not by sight. And all those are true ways and real ways that we do that. But I think there's a reality in which we walk by faith and not by sight whenever we choose those things that the Lord has, has held up for us in the Sermon on the Mount and in the Beatitudes and in uh, his call to live as his disciples because we don't see the effects and so we walk by faith. I think this relates to the parable of the mustard seed in the gospel as well. Those choices that we make that are for the good, uh, those choices that we make for virtue and following the Lord and faithfulness to him, they can seem to us like that smallest of seed that is planted in the ground, hidden as it were. But we know from what the Lord says and from our own knowledge of how plants grow that that mustard seed becomes a bush with large branches. And besides those branches, there are the large root system that we never see as well that can be even more extensive in many plants than the branches that are above ground. And this is what we take on faith and not on sight, that even if it doesn't seem to get us anything or have great effect in this life, that it actually does, even though we don't always see it. It will certainly have great effect in the life to come. And so walking by faith like this, it takes courage for that reason. It takes courage to choose what is good because we don't always see the effect of it. And so when we come before the Lord today and when he comes into our presence in the Eucharist and when we receive him, let us take some time to ask him for that courage, ask him for that grace to walk by faith and not by sight. Ask him for the mercy that we need for the times that we have fallen short and ask him for the grace to follow him in faith so we can stand before him in confidence and give an account of what we have done before him when that time comes. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like a great tree with flourishing branches, or like seed quietly growing, so the kingdom of God increases. Let us pray that we may participate in that plan of God's divine providence. For the church, that as the kingdom of God on earth, it may bring redemption to all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in government and industry, 
that they may encourage and support farmers and all those who help bring food to our tables. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who develop the land, that as they make this earth more productive, may they reverence the natural environment created by God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers, that God may bless their work with favorable weather so that they may reap a bountiful harvest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in any sort of need, that we may recognize and serve Christ Jesus in them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, including Dan Roth, that they may live forever in the courts of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the source of all goodness and grace. Hear these prayers we make as our intercession for others. Through Christ, our Lord. to know the Lord and to bear his cross so to wear the crown he wore all but this is lost worthless refuse to me for to gain the Lord is to gain all I need. Only this I want, but to know the Lord and to bear his cross. So to wear the crown he wore, I will run the race, I will fight the good fight. So to win the prize of the kingdom, of my Lord, only this I want, but to know the Lord, and to bear his cross, so to wear the crown he Let your heart be glad, always glad in the Lord. So to shine like stars in the darkness of the night. Only this I want. But to know the Lord and to bear his cross, so to wear the crown he
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, 
until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Michael, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
grant us peace. Just a reminder once again, since it's still a new way of doing things for us, uh, for communion today, I will be in the center, distributing to both lines, so still make two lines, and I will just alternate giving communion uh, to those two lines, uh, and then there'll be the blood of Christ uh, from the chalice available on either side as you return toward your pew. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Even though the rain hides the stars, even though the mist swirls the hills, even when the dark clouds fill the sky, God is by my side. Even when the sun shall fall in sleep, even when at dawn the sky shall weep, even in the night when storms shall rise, God is by my side. God is by my side. Bright the stars at night when mirror heaven's way to you. Bright the stars in light, where hamlets the saints in love and truth. Even though the rain hides the stars, even though the mist swirls the hills. Even when the dark clouds fill the sky, God is by my side. Even when the sun shall fall in sleep, even when at dawn the sky shall weep, even in the night when storm shall rise, God is by my side. God is by my side. The perfect of life where saints shall gather in deep peace. Deep in heaven's light, where sorrows pass beyond death's sleep. 
even though the rain hides the stars, even though the mist swells the hills, even when the dark clouds fail the sky, God is by my side. Even when the sun shall fall in sleep, even when at dawn the sky shall weep, even in the night when storms shall rise, God is by my side. God is by my side. Blessed are they who sing the fellowship of saints in light. Blessed is heaven's king, O saints adore the Lord most high. Even though the rain hides the stars, even though the mist swirls the hills, even when the dark clouds fail the sky, God is by my side. Even when the sun shall fall in sleep, even when at dawn the sky shall weep, even in the night when storm shall rise, God is by my side. God is by my side.
let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for a few moments. A couple of things to look ahead at a little bit. Our annual mission appeal will take place the last weekend of June. Uh, Sister Nicopoya will be here to make the appeal on behalf of her religious order, which is the Servants of the Lord and the Virgin of Matara. The order was founded in Argentina, and it actually has a presence now, I think even though it's only about 40 years old, in 45 countries throughout the world. Sister Nicopoya is originally from our area. I can't remember if she's from Minnesota or one of the surrounding states, but definitely uh, this part of the country. And we'll be sharing about the work of their order in the Philippines when she is here. There's a great need there uh, for the work of the sisters, both for human and religious development. So please help me welcome Sister to OLP on June 29th and 30th, that weekend. Also, don't forget to mark your calendars for OLP Day on Sunday, July 14th. Join us for Mass at 10 a.m. that Sunday, followed by the Parish Picnic uh, Barbecue, as well as a game of Big Base Kickball. Sign up to bring your favorite grilled or smoked or barbecued dish, and you're welcome to either prepare it at home or bring your equipment, your grill or your smoker, uh, and cook on-site as well if you'd like to do that. And if grilling isn't your thing, we are in need of sides as well. To help us plan, please sign up to bring a dish by Sunday, June 30th. You can do that on the events page of our website, olpmn.org events. And then Deacon John has an announcement as well. So every spring, we ordain a group of priests, and the archbishop assigns them to parishes based on the greatest need, and they are assigned to parishes in June and July. They also do an assessment of deacons and move them about in June and July, and I just found recently that I'll be moved to St. Bonaventure Parish effective July 1st. It's uh, as much of a surprise to me as it is probably to you, and I know some of the staff here as well, um, but that's, that's how it rolls. Mm -hmm. So I've enjoyed my time here and getting to know you very well, very much, and I was really planning on just simply retiring here in a couple more years, but uh, that's not the plan. So I just wanted to say a few words to follow up on that as well. Uh, we are so incredibly grateful to you, Deacon John, for all that you have done here. Just as a reminder, Deacon John was ordained right before the COVID lockdowns happened, so he was coming here, learning to be a deacon, uh, learning this parish at a time when it was hard to get to know anybody or do much of anything, but he uh, jumped right in, and we've been really grateful for your prayerfulness. You. Uh, I have been super grateful for the way he has assisted me at the altar uh, and, um, and all the very uh, many, many things that he has gotten involved in and done, some in the limelight and some behind the scenes. Uh, so... Uh, really grateful to him. Really grateful to his wife, Lisa, as well. Uh, you know, when uh, permanent deacons get ordained, their wife is very much part of their, their ministry. Uh, and as you saw this evening, uh, Lisa read at Mass. She also has done many things behind the scenes as well and gotten involved in many ways. So we're grateful to both of them uh, for their presence here at Our Lady of Peace. As uh, Deacon said, it was kind of a surprise. It wasn't something he requested. Certainly wasn't something I requested. <laughs> uh, but um, there are various needs around the archdiocese, and this is how uh, it goes sometimes. So um, we will pray for you. Uh, we you. know that St. Bonaventure is not far away, and although you'll certainly have plenty of responsibilities there, you're always welcome here as well, both of you. Uh, and we hope to see you around from time to time as well. One other thing I wanted to say along with that is that uh, next weekend uh, during uh, hospitality after the Sunday Mass, and we'll also do something on Saturday evening, have an opportunity uh, to have a little reception for them uh, and uh, give you all a chance to, to greet them, uh, wish them well, uh, and, uh, and do all of those sorts of things also. So that'll be next weekend after the Masses. So let's show our appreciation for Deacon John and Lisa. Oh.
invite you to stand now. We'll conclude Mass with our blessing for fathers, since it's also Father's Day weekend, as, as promised. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Father, creator of all things, thy heavens stand in wonder while earth your glory sings. O most holy Trinity, undivided unity, holy God, mighty God, God immortal be adorned. O Jesus, word incarnate, Redeemer most adorned. O glory, praise, and honor, Me, O sovereign Lord. O most holy Trinity, Divided unity, holy God, mighty God, God immortal be adorned. O God, the Holy Spirit, who lives within our soul, send forth your light and lead us to our eternal Most holy Trinity, undivided unity, holy God, mighty God, God immortal, be adored.